This conference will now be recorded. So yesterday, can anyone say what are the points that we have discussed? Difference between manual and uh, automation testing. And why you, why are you using in uh, automation testing? Okay. And. And again, the pros and cons. Sorry, Uma, can you repeat? Pros and cons. Okay. And anything and else? Cost cutting. Cost cutting. Okay. Interesting. Okay. How about others? Yeah. How about others? Big uh, some graph that represents uh, how much efforts for automation and how much efforts for manual and how better as automation compared to manual yeah a small correction in this kavya it is not about judging who is better between the two as a team how are you bringing a show always remember this thing yeah five okay. points that we need to be focus uh, that we need to be focused on automation testing mm. okay yes we should not mess the scripts, avoiding the complex logic while uh, using uh, automation. Mm -hmm. We can't do automation like 100%. Mm -hmm. And we should know the basics uh, for uh, doing automation testings. Which basics you need to know? Like regression, what is regression testing, smoke testing, uh, sanity uh, testing. Uh, Different testing and concepts of manual testing, basic concepts of manual. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we should, it's like uh, we developed as a, um, we write a quote for the, we developed it as a movie. The last mm. point. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's more into selenium, as selenium is more of test start, test development process. So, in order to ensure that. Uh, you just on a single play button, the script will keep on running. You got my point. Just on a single yes. play button, the script will keep on running. In order to achieve that kind of work, a lot of back behind the scenes is required to code, to debug, to understand what is what and all the stuff. Clear, Iqbal? Yes. That is like compared with the movie. Because pre production takes a lot of time. The script work, the, everything, those takes a lot of time. The shooting, everything. After doing that, on a three, we go to the three, and we watch the movie. Similarly, our customers. Are the business owners what they do is they simply come and sit and they judge the judge the show like as if they'll be giving reviews as if they'll be working these kind of things happen okay 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 i mean that was the reason why i compared with it okay don't say in interviews that it's like a movie no 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 okay 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 so uh, can you tell me what are the different automation tools that you have seen in the market? Different tools used for automation? Uh, Selenium and Cypress. Cucumber. Okay. Well, okay, Cypress. Cucumber is not a tool, it's a framework. Okay. Next, what else? Come on, you must have a lot of tools in the market, right, for automation. Rest assured for API. Rest assured is API library. That is not a tool. Come on, go ahead, go ahead. Shoot out. Selenium, Cypress. What else? Test Studio. Test Studio. Some people say test cafe. Catalan Studio. Yes. The so Catalan Studio is more of editor. Uh, you can also use it both ways. Come on. Yeah, expect. You can use Catalan also. Next. Hmm. QTP. RPA. Automation anywhere. Hmm? These are the most popular tools that are used, right?
क्लियर क्लियर बट वाइज सेरेनियम इज सो फेमस इन द मार्केट आई वाज जस्ट अबाउट टू ड्रैग द ड्रैग द टॉपिक विल गेट टू नो ओके सो QTP is one of the oldest tools. Just remember this point, right? Some people will ask you this kind of questions. QTP is one of the oldest tools in the market, and it is not open source. The license cost is approx five to ten l per user. Okay. Okay. Now, will you use QTP now? No. A uh, one advantage I would like to say one advantage of QTP is that it works well for legacy as well as as well as for desktop based application. Clear. Clear. Is there any doubt, Uma, Kavya, Hari Krishna, Hari Priya, Lata? No. So QTP is ruled out. I can't uh, offer that much. Can I ask you one question? Yeah, uh, yeah, go. Uh, as someone, I think Hari Priya said like it's cucumber. So he said like it's a framework. So what's the difference between a tool and a framework? Can you please tell us? Tool is something which is making your life easier. Framework is something which is part of your coding structure. Okay. It's more of a plugin. It's more of a plugin, not not a tool. Okay. By using that, we gonna write uh, test cases. Yeah, yeah. You'll get to know. You'll get to know. Let Let's go through the basics oh. of the okay. basics of Selenium and Java. Then I'll yeah. use something with Selenium and integrate it, and I'll show you. Okay. Okay. Okay, let's go one by one step ahead. Nothing. We all ensure that that you learn everything and you go. Okay. RPA. Have you heard the term that robotic robotic process or robot process automation? Hmm. Uh, is it R like Python framework? RPA. Yeah, robot uh, framework. No, no. I have. No, no. This is completely a tool where where the end user has to align align with the requirement align with the tool to end user has to align with the tool end user has to have end user or the application should be in sync with it. That means what the problem with RPA is that whatever application or whatever the way that you want to use, you cannot use the way you cannot be flexible with RPA. The other problem is the tool is not so flexible. That means only some applications will work. Mostly this RPA is used for RPA is mainly used for packaged applications or enterprise applications. Enterprise-based applications. Not all the tools or applications are fit for RPA because there's some certain process when you're working with RPA. It's like only it is a basically more of a record and playback tool. But what happens if you, if you want to modify something, it should be modified within its lines. You cannot add your own ideas or own innovations to that RPA tool. Clear? If you have to modify something, you have to contact the supporting. Again, you have to get a result from the supporting. Clear? Yes. Okay. Again, RPA is also a paid. RPA is also a paid tool, which is too costly for a medium or small scale companies. Okay. Maybe MNCs can offer it. I'm not saying it, but still, it's too costly. We have to see a tool that is generic enough for all scale companies, right? Yes or no? Yes. Now, where we have automation anywhere is also same like uh, RPM. Okay, behavior depend 
behavior differs, but automation, the concept remains the same. It's paid and it's not so flexible again. Clear? Yeah. 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 You have covered QTP, RPA, automation anywhere. All are ruled out. And I forgot one more tool. What is the one more tool I forgot? Could anyone take a guess? You have popularly heard it in your JDs. A lot of numbers. Lot number. Just give a try. APM? APM? APM is part of Selenium family. Okay. Okay. So our test? It's Tosca. Have you heard about Tosca in any of the resumes? Tosca? No. Tosca is also one of the tools. Okay. Recent is Tosca. Tosca has been launched like past, for the past four years, it's in the market. Where it has a trial version for 30 days and later you have to you have to pay for it okay again it's a pay tool hmm? and you can automate both web and the desktop based applications with tosca clear recently they are also coming up with the solution for mobile based applications automation clear yeah i mean when you see from automation perspective some people are against using the paid ones right yes so four tools are ruled out. And now we have Test Case Studio. Test Case Studio is more of a recording tool rather than a scripting tool. That means you record and playback most of the time. And small, small changes you can do in the recorded script. Okay? Okay. And it is open source. Mm -hmm. Since it is new in the market, we are born for more issues. So if a tool is now new in the market, in order to find a stability or feed in the market, it will take some time that we need to fix the bugs or something like that. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. Just like maintenance? Yeah, there are some. I mean, it's just like you. if a new iPhone is launched, you will not buy it immediately, right? Let's see the reviews. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah. You like that. I'm not so sure. There's a tool they use it more used with used in combination with uh, TypeScript and JavaScript mostly. I mean, there's a tool, but I'm not so sure. I'll just study about this test and let you know. Now that we are left with three tools, this Selenium, Cypress, Catalan Studio, these are the three tools that offer the flexibility to script. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So out of this, why Selenium is popular? Why not? Why not the Cypress and Catalan Studio? Cypress supports only to write the code in JavaScript. Okay. Hope everyone understands JS as JavaScript, right? Right. Supports only JS. Applicable for Chrome, Firefox. Need to use VS Code as the editor. Visual Studio. Okay. Yeah. Need to use Visual Studio for this. Is it clear? Because if yeah. you are if you are giving your end user customer to write the code in a single language, so definitely it is a loss right for them. Like sometimes it's a loss right because not all the users are comfortable in JavaScript. Yes or no? Yeah. Yes. So that is the reason Cypress is open source. Again, Cypress is an open source, but this is the main drawback why it is lagging behind Selenium. Clear? Yeah? Yeah. So is everyone clear with it? Hare Priya, Hare Krishna, yes, sir. Yeah. Yes.
So when you are left with Catalan Studio and this. So Catalan Studio means basically it's one of the most recent tools that has come in the market. So basically these days what they are doing is they are not using Catalan Studio alone. They are trying to combine Selenium with Catalan Studio. That means what? Previously it was used as a more of a recording tool, more of a coding tool. It has its own set of languages. It has its own set of commands that you need to write. So basically what happens is these the recent times they are integrating Selenium with Catalan Studio. These days instead of using it as an automation tool, they are using it like a code editor. In the recent times, in some organizations I've seen, they are using it more as a code editor style. Like Eclipse is editor tool, IntelliJ is a code editor. Like that, Catalan Studio, they're trying to make it as a code editor tool. Okay. Okay. So Catalan itself is not so strong enough to handle things. When you combine with Selenium, it's strong. Enough. So you are clear of uh, the other tools, the Accept Test Cafe. You are clear of other tools that you have discussed? Yeah. So basically, Selenium advantages and all we will discuss now. Why Selenium is so famous in the market? First thing is open source. Second thing is flexibility. Third thing is can write the code in Java, JS, Phash, TypeScript, TypeScript, Python, Ruby, etc. I mean, clear? Clear, everyone? Yeah, clear. clear. Okay. It's compatible with almost all the browsers. Such as Chrome, Edge. Since Internet Explorer is no more in use, we are given the expiry date for Internet Explorer. We are not using Internet Explorer. Firefox, Opera, Safari, clear? Yes, sir. Clear, everyone? Yes, clear. Yes. So it's compatible with almost all the browsers. You can write the code in Java, JavaScript, and Python. Easy to less hardware usage, less hardware is consumed. That means it's one of the most easiest tools. It's not like it, the tool size is in GBs or something. It's hardly in inbuilt. The Selenium tool size, less hardware is consumed. Open source flexibility. You can write the code compatible with all the browsers. Supports cross browser testing. What do you mean by cross browser testing? Can anyone say? We can run a multiple browser at a time. Mm -hmm. Two browser at the same time. Two browser at a same time. Okay. How about you, Ma? Yeah, I think uh, it's, I mean, whatever the point four you said, I think it comes. The cross browser testing, I feel it's testing uh, mm. with all the browser, browsers. I mean, testing in all the browsers. Okay. So, uh, friend Iqbal said multiple browsers, you said in different genres. Hmm? Oh my, I feel me. code can be used for uh, different browsers. Only we have to change the uh, which browser to uh, yes. you know access and then yeah yeah executing the same script in different browsers. Why this cross browser testing is so important? Because because the same application cannot behave the same way, right? 
in Firefox, the, suppose if your company has an application, if they ask you to test in all the browsers, in Chrome it may work fine, but in Firefox it may not work fine, right? Yeah, yeah. So we need to check in every each and every browser. Yeah, so we have to check in different browsers and report the issues to the dev team if it is really an issue. Yeah. Hmm. So, any doubts? Anything so far? No. Supports parallel testing. So what Iqbal said about the point called running test cases in multiple browsers, that is called as parallel testing. Suppose what we do in general manual testing scenario, if there are 100 test cases, we execute one case after the other. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. So what happens in uh, parallel testing means, suppose you have 10, 100 cases and you want to execute eight test cases simultaneously. So what I can do? Selenium gives this opportunity of flexibility to use parallel testing. So if I make it as true, if I make it as true, then it supports parallel testing. Like on how many number of browsers you want to execute, you can execute less. And just imagine if eight test cases get executed simultaneously, how much time get, does it get reduced? A lot, right? Yeah. In almost like 12 iterations, we'll finish a test cases execution. It's yes, on. Yeah, yes. Multiple test cases, multiple browser clear. There is all the points. Yeah. Last but not the least, it is easy to set up. Hmm. Clear everyone? Yes. So these are the main advantages of Selenium. I mean, no automation tool is offering these many features, right? For them. Yes. Hmm? Okay. So there's a saying in English, you know, all, all remember, every coin has two sides. Remember? Yeah. So, since you have seen the pros of Selenium, what are the cons? No dedicated support team to resolve if you have any issues. Clear? Yeah. Clear. Why no dedicated support team? Because it's open source tool. For open source tool, do we have any dedicated support team? Does any company invest their time on the support team? No, right? No. no. They don't invest. Sorry, Hari Krishna, go ahead. Hari. Ah, Rahul. Uh, you are saying something? No, no, no. Hmm. Here we are If you face any problems, then then you have to go to the forums of Selenium to understand and resolve the issues. Okay. Does not have a default reporting tool. Okay. Okay. I mean, uh, so default means like uh, they'll be using so many, it depends on the company, right? Sorry. Default reporting tool, you said like default reporting tool. So it depends on the company, whatever they 
use so they can proceed with that selling and right yeah basically basically no matter whatever reporting tool you want to use you can use once you go into the organization but what happens is a tool should have its own reporting tool right by default some kind of a reporting tool you need right to evaluate how the things are going or not yes or no yes for example can you can you tell me for example for example if you do i mean if you do some development or something obviously logs not be generated right obviously you'll have the console logs coming right onto the system yes or no okay you have the basic java knowledge right so basically basic yeah. idea of a coding program yeah. right it is an yeah. issue it is coming onto the console what is the part of the programming language it only throws the issue onto the console but it is not log it into a notepad file or it is not log it into a reporting format right yeah, so, yeah. Are... That's true. so by default what is it it doesn't have any reporting mechanism that doesn't mean the tool is really bad right it doesn't have a reporting mechanism that is the drawback with the tool we have to ensure that we have to create a make it make sure that we have a reporting or logging mechanism for it okay okay got it yeah does not support for capture testing yeah. as well as for image processing like if you want to automate a capture or if you want to read a random image text then it is not possible by us sorry uma yeah that's what i'm telling it won't support the caption hmm. does not support the automation of audio and video audio video testing can be done only when you listen right yes or no mm -hmm. yes fingerprints clear clear yeah only applicable for web based applications yes. selenium only applicable for web based applications if you want to automate mobile then we need to use appm which is a derived tool from selenium family not a direct tool but a direct tool from selenium family okay okay everyone it's all no okay 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 you have to i mean default recording and audio video recording then let's go to the slide better okay cannot be integrated with test management tools like jira hplm etc clear yeah last but not the least you need to know you need to know a programming language to make better use of the tool that is a drawback you can say because not all people are flexible enough to learn the coding right but if you really learn the coding part while well, automation it's really a good help for you in the future times okay yeah clear ekbal hari krishna yeah yes it's clear any doubts anything so far
No. Now we understood why, what are the pros and cons of selenium and even though there are these many cons, why they are using selenium? These these all can be done by using some other third party tools. That's why I think selenium yes, is. You need to integrate with third party tools and you have to do it. Yeah. Hmm. Clear? So these are the pros and cons of selenium. So our next uh, topic. So have you heard the concept called the software development lifecycle SDLC? Yes. Yes. What yes. is it all about? It's like what's the process going on in the software development step by step procedure. Mm -hmm. And can you be more clear? Mm -hmm. Like uh, how it is getting from the uh, clients, I mean, like uh, from the customers. So they give, mm -hmm. uh, so whatever he wants, he'll give some details about that so from that we need to gather the i mean we need to analyze the things design development everything comes in uh, in one cycle so that's mm. why mm. it's very important to know every software and i mean who are in the software field they should know so what's going on and what should we what we should deliver to them okay Okay. How about you, Iqbal? In from client to the deployment, we need to uh, go through the step by step process in this SDLC. Like we should uh, gather the requirement for the client and we should analyze it and make a SRS document and we should uh, take approval from the client and we to start a uh, designing of the in which framework and how should we develop the application and after testing and we should to deploy the application in a client side server. Mm. Okay. Okay. It's just like following the steps to fulfill the customer needs. Mm -hmm. I say. So okay. So clear all the everyone's points. So basically the project or kickoff initiation is the phase where they really bid for the project where they have a uh, word with the customer that these are the features that we are offering to the project and these are the things that we want to do and all the stuff. So this is the kickoff or initiation at the intro or a grooming session, I mean intro phase of the project. Once during the requirements gathering session, we'll be gathering all the requirements from the product. And when uh, we gather all the requirements and document it in a form of the SRS and SOW so that we get the agreed signal, agreed uh, agreement between the customers and the software organization in the form of SOW and in the form of SRS documents that will be shared to the internal teams to understand the requirement of what is all happening. So in analysis phase, they do the difference between what are the products or the features that we have versus what are the features that the customer is expecting. If the delta is more, then we need to spend more time on this uh, delta requirement. If the delta is less, then they will finish the work faster. Okay. It is always good to have a very stabilized base product from for your organization so that another with the customer comes up with a new requirement or new changes, it's easy to do it. Clear? Yeah. Yeah. I mean with this analysis, we can add some more things. 
and then this, proceed further. With this, what you can do, ma? I mean, uh, by this analysis, if if you want to add anything, I mean, into I'm um, uh, to improve. So in this stage, I mean, in this phase, we can add right into the framework. Okay. Like uh, I mean, in analysis phase, mm. uh, can you please repeat me? Uh, what do we do in analysis phase? In analysis phase, we generally differentiate the requirement, or if there is any new requirement coming out of this project, we see what is the analysis, what is the how much time does it take, what kind of development activities are actually required here, and what kind of testing is actually needed here, and how do we integrate with the existing product. Okay, okay, okay. I mean, there are a lot of things that they do in analysis phase. Once oh. all the analysis, math, and the calculations is done, then they go to design phase. In the designing phase, they'll build up the mock UI of the screen, mock UI, or they will design the wireframes, or design design the architecture of the application, or how it should be if they want to enhance the code, or they'll discuss about the hardware and software specification, which fits for this application, and we have to request the same accordingly to the customer to have this kind of software and hardware configuration. Okay. okay. So the okay. development phase, the coding starts. The real coding starts from the developer side. So once the development is done, then actually there's a phase called as deployment between development and testing, where they deploy the code to the testing environment. So once they deploy the code to the testing environment, then the testing team tests the code and all the stuff. Once the testing team approves the build, then they go for deployment in the higher in the higher environment, like SIFT or UIT or something. Then we do operation maintenance. What do you mean by operation maintenance? We always see whether the no critical issues, leakage, no financial leakages, all the stuff. Again, if there is a this is a cycle. Why this cycle means again, again, if the customer comes up with a new new change request, then he has to go through all these phases again and again, right? Yeah. Yes. Mm. So these are the things that are comes under software development life cycle. So why are we discussing this point? What is the purpose? Why, as I told you, for automation engineer, he needs to know the basics of the basics of SDLC, SDLC minimum to understand what are the phases that the product undergoing, so that he can plan his journey of when he needs to start the automation scripts. If I am the person who is working for an organization during the software development. During the analysis phase only, I will decide what are the scripts that I should need to develop, what are the scripts I do not develop, what are the scripts that are existing, and I have to change accordingly. So I'll make my analysis and my chat sheet under the analysis phase. When they come to the design phase, hardware, software part, then I'll also plan my design. Like if there are any enhancements are there to the framework changes, if I want to add more third-party plugins, or if I want to create more utilities, I can build it up here so that it is good for the project. And during the development phase, the role of automation in thing will not be anything. Once they deploy it to testing environment, then the role of automation testing comes into picture. These days, organizations are working in such a way that the manual testing and automation testing is going hand in hand. Like if the manual testing is happening in IAT sprint, then automation team will do the do it in the next sprint, the coding part. Always automation team will be one sprint behind the manual testing while coding the while during the coding, during the development of scripts. Okay. Okay. The, but, the current. Yeah, yeah. Uma, go ahead. Uh, I mean, as you said yesterday, but uh, from the manual testers only get, uh, we'll get the test cases, right? After the giving to us, then we'll start testing. I mean, yes, then, yes. then we start scripting. I mean, automation yes. scripting we'll write, right? Yeah, yeah. Because in the first sprint, they have another test cases, right? By the time they come to sprint two, they'll have a different set of cases for the particular sprint, right? So in sprint two, what yeah. happens? They'll ask us to automate the sprint one. Okay. These are the this is the current trend that is happening. The, these days, what is happening? Previously, what have what used to happen when the product goes live, then the automation used to start, then they used to start scripting and all the stuff. But what is happening that because of that idea, the process, the whole agenda of automation, the whole motivation behind using automation is getting destroyed because it will not take a minute or two to prepare a script, right? It'll, sometimes it will take days, sometimes it will take months yeah. to create a perfect script. So what they have decided in the, in the recent times, let manual and automation happen hand in hand 
let automation team be backlog for few sprints so that they'll be ready with the code and at one point of time manual testing and automation testing will be on the same road because at that point they'll listen to the user stories they'll understand the application so they can sit with the manual team to understand more and they can automate fastly right that's one yeah yeah that's true because when the project is before going live all your team members are from any kind of department will be very much helpful to you because the product is not gone live and if you help them they'll be like okay fine you'll be getting more knowledge and more stuff after go live people will not even sit with you that patiently yeah so clear i mean is it clear yeah. everyone yeah ikbal kavya yes yes clear yeah so these are this is a point where you will not see any kind of a google article or something this is based on the experience that we are seeing clear yeah clear so this is the concept of stlc so what do you understand by this stlc concept software testing life cycle we should uh, first step by seeing this image i understand the again we need to do a requirement analysis here mm -hmm. we should plan the testing uh, test plans how we should uh, do a uh, testing we should be planned after completing the requirement analysis process mm -hmm. like what need to be tested what need to be skipped through automation or manual Mm -hmm. like functional non functional testing ui testing mm. test after uh, uh, requirement analysis and test planning completion we start writing a uh, test cases mm. for all the stories mm. uh, uh, environment setup like we should uh, tester will set up a environment like what software need to be and what framework we required for the uh, testing purpose mm -hmm. and hard and hardware also what are the requirements for the hardware tools as well mm. after that we start execute uh, executing the tests manually or automation mm -hmm. after that finally if all thing all things goes perfectly we close the stlc cycle okay so how about others yeah it's like a subset and superset subset and superset okay yeah in sdlc in testing phase these are this this is again a one one phase i mean what 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 the testers will do okay from from the de from the developer they get some some requirements right so from there they do everything okay. requirements planning test cases okay. so basically what happens in the test requirements analysis the requirement analysis that you do during the development and the requirement uh, analysis that you do in the testing phase is altogether a different thing because in requirement analysis we always need to sit with the business owners to understand the requirement to understand the core functionality of the core logic because sometimes there will be lot of math that will be required for our product so we need to understand the math and all the stuff so requirement analysis most of the times it will be happening parallel with development in the grooming session you will not spend any separate time for it so test planning test planning means how many resources do we need what are the task i mean how many test cases what are the test cases that we do what are the action how we need to ensure that more number of uh, bugs are found in the local environment rather than in the uit all the stuff what are the what are the modules that we need to cover what are the functionalities or snippets that we need to cover and then the test case development we develop the test cases as per the document then afterwards we go to the environment setup environment setup is basically like uh, uh basically like there will be a separate environment dedicated to testing team for in order to do the testing activities clear yeah 
though yes, in that in their dedicated environment you have to do your test execution whatever test cases you have written you have to do some test execution and sometimes you need to do some random testing which are away from your test cases in order to ensure that application is working properly or not if you give as per the test cases then that is called as verifying your application if you do some random testing and find some issues that is called validating your application clear yeah test cycle closure is something like once your test cases are completed then you can close them okay any doubts no 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 so these are the first couple of questions that you will be asked whenever you are attending any basic basic automation interview what is sdlc what is stlc and what are your reviews like when the automation team comes into picture these are some basic questions will be asked in most of the interviews clear yeah so coming to selenium suit what what are the tools that are present under the selenium family selenium id selenium rc selenium web driver and selenium grid so selenium id is basically it's a selenium id is selenium integration development editor environment for environment so basically it is one of the most more widely used it is one of the record and playback tools you can simply record and playback the tool playback the script okay it's just like a tape recorder where you can just record your voice you can play and play and again for a number of times okay okay selenium rc rc stands for remote control server so basically what happens in order to avoid this record and play mechanism they have, the selenium founders have invented a tool where we can write some code and the code will inter interact with the browser in a easier and faster way because if you have the coding thing in your picture you can play around with the code as and when when you require it you can play around with the application at ease right any doubts no how about others mr hari hari priya hari krishna kavya ikbal no it's clear yes clear rahul mm -hmm. so selenium web driver is the current tool that we are using where selenium web driver is the current tool that is offering the flex that is giving us the flexibility to write the code in multiple programming languages Selenium RC is the tool that only allows us to write the code in JavaScript until 2018. Okay. Selenium okay. Grid. Uh, we'll discuss more on each and every tool in the next session. That is tomorrow. Because if I start taking up one tool, it may exceed the time also. Okay. So the last point that we have is Selenium Grid. So Selenium Grid is a tool that is used for automating your running your test cases in a distributed environment. what do you mean by distributed environment so basically what you have an under the similar network my current laptop is my master and i have five virtual machines hope everyone knows what is a virtual machine right right yeah so what happens now i have 100 test cases with me so i can't execute all the 100 test cases in a single machine right i want to execute all the 100 test cases in different different mesh i mean i want to distribute my 100 test cases across the five virtual machines so what do you do with the help of selenium grid you can achieve this kind of a concept clear yeah clear clear with all the, i mean you just have the basic uh, you got the basic idea of what are the four different tools under the selenium family ah uh, one question selenium uh, four is the latest version right in under the selenium web driver under the selenium web driver selenium four is the latest Kavya, is it clear? Yes, yes. Hmm. So, anyone has any doubts with respect to previous topics or the current topic that you have, or you want to ask any questions with respect to automation? You can ask me. We have some time. Yeah. Up to here, it's clear for me. Hmm. Okay.
so tomorrow by the time you join the class what i want everyone to do is go for go to search for selenium id for chrome okay once you click on selenium id for chrome you will see the first link right selenium id is the link yes or no yes click on this link already this extension is added in my system that is what is called and showing remove from chrome so you click on add to chrome okay okay, okay. add this extension by tomorrow so that whatever i do tomorrow you will understand again i'll tell this concept again like i'll show you right away if i click on remove from chrome it will remove from my chrome then we'll click on add to chrome so basically selenium id is the extension guys it is not a tool more of a tool i can say it is more of a extension clear clear yeah. hmm clear everyone yes yeah clear any doubt no more of a extension tool that is why selenium id is so light one of the most lightweight tools among selenium family selenium family itself is a lightweight but among them selenium id is the most lightest tool that is hardly in kbs okay yeah can we can we regroup tomorrow for understanding more of selenium id and selenium rc and selenium web driver and all the concepts yeah yeah sure so if we finish the concepts about selenium family in detail then tomorrow we'll go for jdk installation also mm -hmm. and start okay. the okay okay yeah. okay cool see see you around yeah bye bye bye